Being Sultan isn't easy. Protection from uprisings, coups, and assassination is an understandable desire for any ruler. Decades into the rise of the Ottoman Empire, having seen the bloody and backstabbing history of their Roman counterparts, Sultan Murad I had an idea to bring himself unwavering protection. A band of elite soldiers, raised from infancy, trained with the strictest discipline with total allegiance to their Sultan. However, acquiring unbreakable loyalty was not simple, guaranteed, or for that matter, ethical. Welcome to History on Fleek. Today we examine why Janissaries stole thousands of children. The recruitment of Janissaries is a controversial topic, as by modern eyes, it appears a grand kidnapping operation. Exclusively to Christian youths, Jews and Turkish youths were entirely exempt. The system of acquiring Christian youth was known as Devjame and had singular rules. Turkish officials of the Sultan would make their way around the Balkan territory of the Ottoman Empire every five years to take one boy from every 40 houses. This system of child recruitment was to bring the youngest and most malleable to the education and allegiance of Islam and the Sultan. Most commonly, boys were taken from villages across the Balkans and were often given a chance at a better life. Before being taken to military training, the boys would be given considerable formal education in the sciences, math, and of course, Arabic Turkish literacy. Around 10 to 12,000 boys were taken from Christian families to be converted to Islam and did face resistance with Christian rebellions in Ipirus and Albania in 1565. History notes that many families of the Balkans did their best to avoid Devshirme through bribing officials, marrying their sons as young as 12, or converting the males in the family to Islam. It should also be stated that as the Ottoman Empire grew, the Janissaries did move on from strictly recruiting slaves and that citizens could buy into the order and receive its numerous benefits. The Janissaries were the military elite of the Ottoman Empire. The closest historical equivalent would be the Praetorian Guard of the Roman Empire. They were the personal bodyguards of the Sultan. A precursor to shock troops seen in the following centuries, their military prowess was one of their considerable strengths. Renowned for their light armor, swift movement, and prestigious marksmanship. The Janissaries would fight many seminal battles for the Ottoman Empire, make and break sultans, and become famous for their discipline in battle and, in time, remarkable power. The Janissaries were formed under the rule of Murad I, who began the blood tax to collect children across the Balkans to be trained for the elite unit. This began in the mid-14th century. Come the 19th century, the Janissaries had grown in such stature and influence that they faced backlash from the Sultan and were soon sentenced to execution from an empire in decline. From the age of 6 to 10, boys were taken from the Balkans to Anatolia to be raised in Turkish and Islamic customs. Their initial break-in would be around seven years of farm labor before being taken to the capital to begin military training. Before the training began, the boys would be tested and assigned their military roles based on their physical capacities, and so would be directed towards navy, infantry, or artillery. The overwhelming majority would be infantry, and the training of over six years taught them drills of muskets, bows, swords, and even javelins. Once training was completed, the boys would be considered new soldiers, or yenisheri. Akin to the forces of the Hun Empire and Mongol Empire, the Janissaries were feared marksmen famed for sniper-like abilities even in conditions of barely any light. Their light armor and fast movement for infantry gained them a fearsome reputation. The Janissaries are often noted as a highly disciplined unit, but most frighteningly, they are noted as capable of near silent movement. Though starting and building a formidable reputation as archers, the Janissaries moved on to using firearms as soon as available to them in the mid-15th century. Axes and forms of scimitar were common in melee combat, though the arms recognized as the weapon of choice for the Janissaries were the Yatan, a short but deadly Turkish saber. <laughs> 
the most famous battles the Janissaries fought for the Ottoman Empire would unquestionably be the fall of Constantinople in 1453. Sultan Mehmed II led his Janissaries into a 53-day siege, resulting in the capture of the capital. The end of not only the medieval period, but essentially the last remnants of the Roman Empire. The impact of the Ottoman Empire capturing Constantinople was multifold. It marked a chapter in military history as the walls of Constantinople were believed to be the most advanced defense on Earth at the time, but were felled with cannons and gunpowder. This marked a change in warfare for the coming future. Perhaps most significantly, Christian Europe was rocked by the capital's fall, many believing that Constantinople would be a precursor to similar outcomes all over the continent. So shaken was the Christian world that Pope Pius II loudly called for further crusades against the Muslim Empire. The Ottoman Empire was one of the most significant and powerful states of the 15th and 16th centuries. It was a creation of the Turkish tribes of Anatolia or Asia Minor. Its rule lasted over 600 years before its replacement by the Turkish Republic and more modernized states in the early 20th century. Founded by Turkish chieftain Osman I, in its prime, the Ottoman Empire spanned an incredible breadth of the earth. Its expanse covered Europe from Vienna to the Balkans, a huge swath of the Middle East and Arabian Peninsula, as well as the states of North Africa. The initial formation of the Janissaries was a corps of elite infantry that had one purpose and one purpose only, a completely unwavering dedication to the Sultan. This meant that they were not permitted to marry or have children at least till the age of 40. There was no pledge per se, these were relatively brainwashed people raised to know no other way of life. They existed to protect and kill for the power of the Ottoman Empire. Despite much internet and Reddit mumblings, the Janissaries were not unsullied. In fact, in later centuries, as the Janissaries in essence became more self-aware, they did have marriages after demanding such freedom from the Sultan. Game of Thrones, unsullied, are often compared to the Janissaries, and this incredible elite unit of slave soldiers may have been some form of inspiration to their fictional counterparts. However, the unsullied from Game of Thrones were eunuchs. There is no historical record of Janissaries being so. Remarkably, the ranking of the Janissaries was entirely culinary-based. Food and its serving held a symbolic and practical function. Every division of the Janissaries was called Olshak, hearth. The highest ranking officers were known as Shorbachi, soup makers. Military ranks all followed this form, with rank titles translating to baker, scullion, chef, and griddle bread maker. To the Janissaries, the Sultan was titled Bezleyen Baba, the father who feeds us. The Janissaries would carry their kazan with them, a large copper cauldron which was a prestigious item to the regiment. Should it be captured by the enemy, all Janissaries were discharged and essentially disgraced never to be paraded in public. The kazan's symbolism had a huge political consequence. Should the Friday handouts of the ceremonial dish pilaf, a mutton and rice stew, from the royal palace be declined, it was a sign the Janissaries were at odds with the Sultan. The symbolic authority of the Kazan was most potent when it was turned over and beaten with a ladle. It meant the Janissaries were aggrieved and ready to overturn their Sultan. There is some debate on the slave status of the Janissaries. Their initial capture and conversion to Islam in childhood is inarguably a force of enslavement. Yet, some Islamic scholars would argue that once converted to Islam, they were no longer slaves. This ethical minefield is further complicated by the high-ranking and rarefied position the Janissaries found themselves in. Loyal only to the Sultan, handpicked from abroad not to sympathize with the Turkish people, and more than often, becoming officials with desirable socioeconomic status. However, the Janissaries' growth in power and influence reveals the truth of what was originally constructed as a slave class. Once Janissaries were able to marry and conduct their own business, once they had the power to overthrow or reject the rule of sultans, they were viewed as a burden to the Ottoman Empire. One sultan famously declared that sultans were becoming subject to their own slaves. Irrespective of freedoms and rights gained over time, it very much appears that Janissaries were military slaves. If there's something you'd like to hear about the Ottoman Empire, let us know in the comments. 
like, subscribe. This is History on Fleek, and we'll see you next time.